So Robert, I, I want to thank you for being here today. Number one, you know, obviously you're a member of the community and you're leading with contribution and you shared with sure. so much with, with some of us already on a very mm -hmm. intimate level. And I'll leave that up to you if you want to share that later on. But um, we do these Thursday meetups so that we can provide some community, some context, some conversation, because we want to have commitment to each other, right? That's what, that's what being in a community is all about. Um, so thank you for being our guest today. And of oh, course, we do record these so that people in the community can watch the recaps later um, amongst their own time, because we're all entrepreneurs. We're in the grind. We're in the hustle. And a lot of us are all over the world, right? You're in England today. So um, I'm very, very, very excited to have you as our guest speaker today. Um, Robert, before we get started, everybody that's here and is committing to you is going to introduce themselves, if you don't mind. Yes, so, of course. I'll go first. My name is Adam. I am your moderator today. I have a software as a service platform called Clarify, and I am very, very appreciative of all the community members that participate in this each week. And to you, Robert, thank you so much. And I will turn it over to Rachel and then Jonathan over at GoDaddy. Hi, everybody. Rachel McCool from GoDaddy. Um, I manage community experiences and part of that teaming up with my co-pilot is Jonathan. Um, but we're incredibly grateful for this group. We love participating and just hearing your stories. And Robert, um, I think that you are the first person from England um, with us for, for our meetup. So wow. um, why don't you, you already shared some cool stuff about yourself. So I can't wait to hear more. <laughs> Thank you. And hi, my name is Jonathan. Uh, as Rachel said, I work um, closely with her on helping with some of our community efforts. Uh, I work also uh, as an engagement manager uh, on the brand social media team. And I do, I, I look forward to these every single week. Uh, it's, a, it's a great chance for all of us to get together and just see some familiar faces. So Robert, thank you for being with us today and I can't wait to hear from you. Thanks. Good morning, I'm, a, I'm Michelle Alexander with AJN Financial. And basically I help others live a better financial life through building good credit, good savings, emergency funds, and helping them plant their money tree. Hey Robert, nice to meet you. Nice to hear from you today. Uh, I'm Patrick Kagan, president of PK Solutions Group. Uh, and my ho uh, whole approach is to help folks in their personal and professional growth. My mantra is better can be yours. And I'm just a phone call away to make that happen. It sounds like uh, you lived that in your backstory you told us before we started <laughs> recording. So I can't wait for the full story. Yeah. Thanks, Patrick. Yeah, Michelle, Patrick, thank you for introducing yourself and being here today. Amazing con contributors in the community. Mr. Castanis, Chris. So Chris Castanis is out in the Carolinas. He likes to help people set up their, their safety nets, right? He's in the insurance realm. He helps people figure out the complexities that uh, allow them to have a little bit more fun with planning for things that are unseen. He likes to make fun videos and contribute them. So Chris, thank you so much for being here today. Um, and that leads us to, to you, Robert. Thank you so much for taking time. We obviously know that it's the end of your day. It's your evening. So uh, <clears throat> hopefully you can rock us, right? Let's, hey, let's, well. let's hear some, some, some background story into what brought you to where you're at today. And then we can get into the context of what you do for people. Sure, abs absolutely. And um, yeah, I, I just hope that I think it's Chris, isn't it? It gets over the addiction to helium. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I, I rattled on a little bit before before we started um, and we obviously weren't recording. So I'm, I'm just going to give give a concise version of that this time. But um, I come from a background really in the music industry. Um, many moons ago and it, and it seems like so long ago now that it does feel like it's somebody else's life um now to be honest where i've ended up now where i work with people through their own sort of self-sabotaging self-imposed limitations and their business strategy is a combination of the things that i've gone through um during the music industry and coming out of the in industry and becoming more of an entrepreneur both of those things have kind of molded me into the person that I am now and, and created the passion in me for the things that I do. Um, when it comes to the personal development stuff, um, I'll touch on the story very, very quickly again, but basically before that ever happened, um, what happened was I became pretty successful in, in the music industry and we were regularly playing football stadiums and traveling the world and all this sort of stuff, playing, playing to many thousands of people. 
And uh, previous to that, I'd, I'd given up on the music industry and decided that was it. And I was selling motor cars, used motor cars to, to feed the family. And I got a phone call to join, to join the band or at least come and have a sing. And I, I went along and had a sing, got, got that. And within a week or two, I was on tour in Scandinavia and then I was touring the States and it was a whirlwind. Um, and it was, it was fun. It was fun for a while. Um, but what was really, really interesting was I got about a few months into that, which was one of the most exciting periods of my life in terms of my music career since I'd had the original CBS deal. Um, and I had to go on antidepressants. And I haven't shared this so far. This came before the story I shared earlier. And the reason for that was because my, my self-worth was so low. I was ready for the world to take it all back again, like it had, a life had made a mistake and handed me something I didn't really deserve. And um, that got me to a point where I realized I had to do some work on myself. And that was compounded by the fact that my dad was really into personal development. And he gave me a set of Jim Rome cassette tapes. They were back then, guys. Some of you will remember them. And um, yeah, on, 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 on the tapes, I learned that, you know what? The mitigating factor in everything in my life that I wasn't enjoying the experience of was me. I was in all of those pictures, all of those things. I was at cause. Things weren't happening to me. I was actually creating all of it, even the stuff I didn't like, which was most of it at that time. But I could have taken that two ways. And luckily for me, I think I took it the right way. I could have gone, oh, well, you know, I don't want to take responsibility for that. It's too much. I, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I could have carried on blaming, playing the blame game and, you know it's raining on my parade and it's the government and the weather's not very nice or whatever excuses you want to look for. But luckily for me, that was good news because I thought, Hey, you know what? At least that means if I don't like it, I can change it. I'm in control. So far what I'm creating isn't anything to write home about and I'm not happy about it. And I'm not enjoying it, but if I'm creating that, surely I can create something else. And that started me on the path to personal development. And I remember that when I was touring, in actual fact, I started writing my first personal development uh, stuff when I was actually touring, actually it was touring England, I remember it, um, because I was really bitten by the bug, absolutely bitten by the bug. And I thought, I wanna commit my life to doing this stuff and, and empowering other people to realize, you know what, the world doesn't happen to you, you create it all. And even if you have a problem with accepting that right now, that's okay, you don't need to accept it. You don't need to understand how electricity works to get light from a light bulb, right? You just need to flip the switch. So be open to the fact that if the way it's, it's your life's going right now isn't working for you, be open to trying another way because what have you got to lose? And that's kind of where I got to in my life with that. And then to touch on the story um, that I mentioned earlier on, what, what basically happened was uh, I, I was touring all around the world. I was slowly but surely getting myself back together mentally. And um, I remember that I was in a hotel room in St Kilda, Melbourne, Australia, um, my wife had had cancerous cells show up and they were aggressive and we, we, we were really worried. So she was crying. I wasn't there to support her, which was awful. And then my, my youngest son, Tyler, he now works with me in the business. He's nearly 30 now. So I guess you guys know I'm not 28 now. Um, he came onto the phone and started crying and just said, Daddy, why don't you live with us anymore? And it broke my heart. And it kind of was the moment where everything, it was that kind of um, epiphany, if you like, where I thought, I don't want to live like this anymore. I, I don't love the music industry more than I love my family. And I want to create a lifestyle that revolves around my family. Um, the band I was in was not my future. I was a hired hand, really. Um, so therefore, my future was being dictated to by them. I couldn't plot my own course, I couldn't do anything. So I decided I, I was gonna do that very thing. 
But here's what, I lack the courage. I'll fess up, I lack the courage at the time to actually make the leap because uh, I had a mortgage, that was my only income at the time. And I thought, what do I do if I jump out of this? It took me two years to come to the point where I realized I still hadn't get, got any closer to being in a position where really it was safe for me to make the jump. But I needed, to, I got to that point of kind of, um, I think it was W. Clement Stone coined this phrase years and years ago, inspirational dissatisfaction, such a wonderful thing. It means you ain't gonna do this anymore, no matter what. So I jumped out and burned my bridges, burn the boats, whichever way you, you, you like to say it yourself, and gave myself no safety net. So there was the absolutely no option for failure. I had to make it work. I started a small um, domestic cleaning agency, which in the south of England, really, we didn't have enough business at the time to sustain to the level I needed it to be. So I got a small loan, bought a 12 foot caravan, towed it up to London and started developing the business there. And um, I would literally drop leaflets all day long. I would um, interview cleaners and, excuse me, I'll have a sip of tea in a minute. And I would then go and I'll interview clients in the evening. And in the summer holidays, uh, my kids would come up and help me as well. So they came up occasionally and would help me. But within six months of doing that and giving myself no option for turning around, I literally not only replaced the income, I doubled it. I moved into a bigger house, whereas originally I was worried I wouldn't be able to pay the, the, the mortgage on the house I had. And I was then able, because I'd been able to put a team in place in London, to actually come back and spend all of my time working out of home. And, and that's where my passion for entrepreneurialism, let's get it out, um, came from, was because entrepreneurialism is a great, way of taking back the power in your life as well it's not just it's a combination of the both it's the way you feel about yourself what you truly believe on an inner level about what you can achieve in life but it's also having a vehicle that you can go out there and create value for others in a big enough way that it creates massive value for you too in terms of your quality of life so i'm inspired driven and passionate about about both sides of what I do for that reason. Shall I take a breath? Yeah, I, I love it. I, <laughs> your backstory is amazing. Obviously, <laughs> you lived this amazing life and, and playing on words, you, you had to kiss it goodbye. Um, uh -huh. You know, one of the things you said earlier was there was a moment in life where you looked and you looked back and you saw yourself in a totally different life and mm. you didn't recognize it. And some of us, especially those of us that jump into the world of, of being business owners and entrepreneurs, um, some, sometimes that's still in the present for us, right? Limiting belief is yeah. such a sabotage. It, it just creates this, this yeah. crushing weight that's completely unnecessary and it holds us back. And like you said, once you made that jump and that transition, your life actually opened up and became better than it ever could have mm. been. And yeah. I find that so many entrepreneurs really are um, holding themselves back because they're looking in the mirror and they're seeing somebody from a past life when they yeah. know in their heart, they've already become somebody else. And that's what we're really about, right? Is creating yeah. this drive and this ability to reach the next, the next level, the next evolution of our own selves. And yeah. I love what, I love what you do, uh, Robert, you know, you, you. you balance things between peak performance and personal alignment. And that's a very, very different audience style, right? So talk to us a little bit about that. I mean, obviously we have candid conversations. We yep. love having candid conversations. That's why we do this. And you do that with your coffee chats. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about what it meant for you to find out that you had these two audiences and how you're, how you're pushing forward now with this new, uh, this new direction in, in your life and in your business. Yeah, well, it, it's kind of, I mean, we, we found originally that we, you know, when you're passionate about something, you kind of, you end up being in it to the extent where if you're not careful, you haven't got the overview, the big picture view of everything. But over time, if you're tracking everything and monitoring it, you start to see a trend. And, and, and what we find is we've got a definite split in our audience. And, and whereas before we were kind of sending everybody to the same place and giving them pretty much the same stuff, now we're evolving to a place where we're, we're splitting in order to serve the different audiences 
um, best in, in the best way that suits them. So we've got kind of like um, at the moment we're, we're splitting between what I've always been doing and a new brand that's evolving out of us called Empowered, uh, Powered Life TV, which is really for personal development junkies. People who just love it are committed to the growth, committed to the journey. They love everything spiritual alignment, everything personal growth. It's for those folks. The other stuff um, that, that I've been doing, which is very much on Robert C. Brown, still encompasses a lot of that inner work when we're talking about personal performance, but is, is kind of aimed more towards entrepreneurs who perhaps feel that they know most of the strategy. They've taken the courses, but it's still not working. They might not know all of it, but it's still not working for them. So they're beginning to realize that in actual fact, probably the biggest block in their business is them and potentially their team, their colleagues as well. That's about getting them right first and then maybe having a look at the strategy, uh, strategy side of things. Because here's the thing, I've always believed, and it, it, it is true that you and I, for instance, Adam, right, we, we could be exposed to the same training. You could go away and become tremendously successful and create a life of your dreams based on that training. I could end up doing absolutely nothing with it. So what's the difference that made the difference? Is the difference in the training? It, it really can't be, can it? The difference has got to be in how you are wired for me, the way you're wired. Are you wired for success or not? And if you're not, you better do something about that because it doesn't matter how much exposure you've got to the best training in the world. If you're going to keep getting in your way, it's not going to do you any good. So that's, that's why it's, but it's very, you'll find that that audience it's very much more about how it's affecting their bottom line. Yeah. Whereas the other folks are not interested in the bottom line. They're interested about in, in just pure life experience, contributing more. So there's a very, there's a very definite split in, in the audience and in the message. And um, yeah, and then we, we've got like a three pronged attack, whereas we've got the, that's more of a, a kind of coaching approach and then we've got the Oakland Piermont brand which is just basically that is marketing and conversion consulting and services so that that's the that's enough <laughs> I, I love I love it you know what so so many people in their businesses are like that right we yeah. start down in a journey and we find out that we've got this this love and this passion and, and we've got so mm. much to offer and it's hard for mm. us to segment things out and really focus on different things, but mm. you know, you're doing it well. Uh, I'll put it out there. You're contributing well in the community and you can see and, and really take in what you're putting out there with context that matters in the moments mm. for us. And I love saying moments that matter because every day is a new moment. Every experience is a new experience. Every day is a new opportunity to make a change. And mm. honestly, with technology and community and commitment like this, right? In this mm. group, you could be on this, you could be listening to it as recap, you could just be reading through the community page, but it's what you need when you need it, right? And yeah. so as entrepreneurs, you find that some, some days you need performance. You need to yeah. really have somebody be an accountability partner yeah. to push you where you need to go because you know you're ready for that next level. And then there's other days you wake up and you go, am I lying to myself? Like, is this, yeah. is this real? Do I deserve this? Right. So many people ask that question every day. Do I deserve this? Yeah. You know, what, what is my why? And is it strong enough? Well, it is, but maybe you need to focus on that and it's okay. And I love that that's what you've got out there because it's giving people the availability to kind of coexist yeah. between performance and alignment and having that, you said it earlier, that lifestyle balance. Right. And yeah. I, I love that. That's what you're putting out there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, and you, the one word you used there was accountability. That is so, so important. And that's, that's, that's why I believe you see with group coaching programs, one-to-one -one coaching, there'll always be a place for that stuff. Courses are great, but the problem is the accountability isn't there. The minute you end up, um, end up in a group coaching environment where you're buddying up with other people and you're accountable in some way, you raise your game. 
when you're working one-on-one -on -one with a coach or a consultant, you're using your A game because nobody wants to look silly. And, and that's what it really is. It's, it's, I'm not a big fan of ego. I think, I think a lot of time you should try and um, navigate your way through life with as little ego involved as possible and do it spiritually, spiritually if, if at all possible. But sometimes ego is useful. It's useful when it gets you to a place where you're going to feel embarrassed if you don't toe the line. And I think I mentioned to you before, I, I, I love the law of attraction. I believe in it strongly. It does work. But if we look at the word attraction for a minute, 10 letters, six of which make up the word action. Take the word action out of attraction, what you got? Not a lot, nothing, in fact. Well, there you go. There's a clue for life. We, we, can, we, can, we can all sit there and get excited about doing stuff, but at some point, we've got to do something and go out there and make it happen. And the law of attraction rewards us for taking action. Um, and there's a couple, couple of other things. I'm going to write them down, you see, because with the gray hair, sometimes I forget. But with action, I want to mention something here that used to plague me in the old days, where... I'd always be trying to, whatever I was trying to do, I was trying to come up with answers to questions before actually taking any action. And that's a very difficult thing to do. And yet I found from personal experience and, and, and the experience of people I've worked with over quite a few years now, that in actual fact, when you're in a position where you've, you've maybe got three or four different avenues that you wanna go in and you're not sure which way to go, and you're really finding it difficult to make a decision, make a decision just pick one it don't matter pick one do it and very quickly you're going to find out whether you pick the wrong one or the right one if it's the right one bang the drum great one step closer to the right one then do one of the other ones until you find the one that works and if you pick the right one first we'll bang the drum even louder you cracked it great now drive everything you've got behind that everything be an unstoppable force. Make the universe bow to your will. You can do it. You can do it. But procrastination and sitting still and trying to figure it all out doesn't work for anybody. Take some action. Momentum is everything. You know, they say inaction is a choice, right? Uh -huh. Sometimes that's a very, very uh, unwise choice. And so <laughs> you're very, very much right. And Honestly, I, I look at it, you and I kind of talked about this uh, on a separate conversation was, you know, what, what's the real differentiator between those moments that matter? Like if you had a, a little scratch, you dusting yourself off, getting up and going on your own, or yeah. is it something that's going to be life changing, life plaguing? And there's a voice that comes to you and it can be either or it can be, this is the moment you break yeah. and you can, you can play victim and you can rely on that. Or this could be your origin story. If you look at yeah. it that way, this is the moment you broke through this, you, you overcame that obstacle. And yeah. obviously you've got a very, very uh, fantastic background in your story. And, I, and I'm glad that everybody turned out you know, well and you've been able to align your family, but mm. so many of us don't see that other side of it, right? We see the obstacle uh, in front of us and yeah. there's the voice that says, well, what if I don't do anything? What, will it change? Maybe I'll yeah. just leave it be. Um, so I appreciate you for touching on that because you're right. It is, a, it is a choice to make an action, take an action. It's also a choice not to. I go on a lot about spiritual alignment. A lot of people sometimes wonder what, what I'm talking about. And um, I'm not going to start drawing pictures because I don't think you'll see them very well. But if we think of the, the kind of idea of a, um, an iceberg and you've got 5% above the water, think of the 5% as your logical conscious mind, Okay. That's what you use to navigate your way through our physical reality. Then below that, you've got the kind of 95%, which is your subconscious mind below the water. You don't see it, but it's the biggest part of who you are as a being. So all of that stuff in there is actually who you are, what you really believe about yourself, and ultimately will affect the actions you'll take in your physical reality. Now, the weird thing is that that little... 5% up there on the top is responsible for all of the challenges and the problems that we face in our physical reality, the world that we call reality. And it's the very place we return to all the time to try and fix it, which is using the same level of intelligence that created it to fix it. 
never works. The only way to really um, access a higher level of intelligence is to go within, is to become more spiritual and, and become aligned with yourself. Now, here's the thing, and I'll try and make this as concise as proper uh, as possible, otherwise we'll all be having breakfast together. Um, but that 85% of you is basically your programming. The programming, however, will go out through the reticular activation system to seek evidence through your conscious mind to support whatever thoughts or beliefs you're having so that it, it, it reaffirms it and strengthens that belief system. OK, now what you really need to do is go to a place where that's not the case, because here's the thing. You can do all the affirmations. You can do all of that sort of stuff. And you can start to reprogram yourself on a subconscious level, which is all great stuff. And everybody should be doing it, by the way. And then somebody you really admire, somebody whose opinion you really value, comes along and tells you that you're wrong or that they don't believe in what you're doing. And you'll buy into that. And now your subconscious will go out there to seek evidence to support that belief. And you're undoing everything that you've been doing. And then you go back to square one, which is not what we want. So below what I would call the, the ocean bed is the superconscious. If you like your connection to spirit, to the God force, whatever name you want to give it doesn't really matter. But it's a place where faith lives. It's your connection to who you truly, truly are, who you were when you came into this physical body and who you'll be when you return to spirit. It's that knowing, it's an innate knowing about who you really are, why you arrived here, and it's pure faith. Difference between faith and your subconscious reprogramming, faith doesn't need evidence from the physical world to prove it right or wrong. So once you get to a place where you have absolute faith in who you are and what you're doing, nothing out there can shake you. Then you become unstoppable. Then you become the type of person that when they fall over, as you said earlier, and take the skin off their knees, they're getting up. Not for a minute are they considering staying down. Why? Because they're passionate. They've aligned what they're doing out there in the physical world with who they truly are on an inner level, as deep as you can go. So in other words, they're aligned with their purpose, their real purpose for being here in the first place. You ever tried shaking somebody off that path? So that's why I say to everybody, don't get into anything just for the money. It's got to mean something to you because business and life gets hard sometimes. We all have a curveball once in a while to try and duck. And uh, if you ain't passionate, sometimes it's, it's, it's easier to stay down and take the count. But if you're passionate about what you're doing and you know that you're adding value to this world of ours, this beautiful planet of ours, and you're making a positive difference, there ain't nothing going to shake you off. And if it does, it'll only be very temporarily. And then you're back on, on, on the horse and you're going again. But just to finish on this point as well, we each of us on average have around about 60,000 thoughts a day. So if you want to go out there and physically, consciously try to control the thoughts you think, you're going to have a hard time and your life's going to be miserable. You won't live any longer. It will just feel like you are. What you really need to do is you need to work on your core beliefs what you believe about yourself deep down, because every single belief fires off thoughts, thousands of them, thousands of them from one belief. So you can't control all those thoughts, but what you can do is affect the thoughts by changing the belief. Take a breath. No, I love it. And, and, and don't apologize. People don't hear, like you go into a casino and hear the jackpot and money spewing out. The machine yeah. doesn't apologize. Yeah. You're, you're, you're throwing amazing things at us, right? We're, we're at the jackpot. Thank so thank you. Thank you. You know, I, I love what you shared with us because so many of us are trying to get to that point where we have this mm. unlimited power inside of ourselves, right? This belief that's just going to break through and take us wherever we're going to go, no matter what the world says or does. Yeah. Um, and, and, it's hard, right? It's hard to find that. And one of the words I think about when I, when I think about what you just shared is the word impact, right? 
And inside of the community, impact is a positive thing. We want to impact each other, empower, lift, elevate, do what we can to perpetuate and build. But then you step outside of the world and you say the word impact, like, oh, impact what? Who ran into what? Did somebody crash? Did somebody burn? Did the mm. ship sink? Did the iceberg take you out? Mm. You know, and, and there's, there's value in understanding that perspective and protecting yourself. So make sure that you're aligned in a community where you can find that inspiration and find that advice and find that ability to really train yourself internally to create the voice that really matters, which is your own, the belief and the faith that you can do it, you're capable of doing it, you're willing and ready to do it. And that's Mm. where we're at right now. And so that's why I appreciate the fact that you offer, you know, not just the journey that you're on, but the vulnerability that you've had to change some of the things in the past. And you you're present to the needs of others, knowing that it, maybe it's alignment, maybe it's performance, Mm. maybe it's, maybe it's something entirely different, you know, Mm. and that's okay. And I think the rest of us need to really like check, check in the mirror, check internally and see Mm. what, what do I really need? Is it, is it the numbers I need to hit? Or maybe I'm not in the right field. Is it, is it the fact that I need more time with my family? Is it the fact that I just need to be in a community? I'll be totally, you know, candid with you guys. 2020 was a rough, rough year. And if I hadn't Mm. been part of this community, I just don't know that I'd still be here. Right. I I don't know. That's total honesty because there were, there were very dark moments where I just didn't feel worthy. Right. I didn't feel capable and finding that in a community like this and having the voice to, to like ricochet off or, or just bounce ideas back and feel safe about it. That's Mm -hmm. amazing. So thank you for that. Thank you for all you've shared today, Robert. Oh, it's a pleasure. Absolute pleasure. And I I just want to add to what you said there, if that's okay, is is the power of community is incredible because energy is everything. We are all energy. Energy is pervasive. So get around positive energy. And if if you're not in a great place yourself, other people will pull you back up. Whereas if you're if you're in a great place and you hang around negative people, very soon you become one of them. So be careful who you hang around with. Find communities like this and become a part of them. Because it, it, it's um, you can't measure the impact that will have in your life. Um, so I absolutely concur with everything you said. Yeah, yeah. A match by itself can only steal it for so long. Mm. Group them together and you got a bonfire. So yeah, I absolutely love this. You know, one of the things we do, Robert, is we like to open everything up to comments and kudos. After we've kind of heard the story and your journey sure. and, and how you're impacting and empowering people. Um, and so thank you for everything you've shared today, obviously. Oh, pleasure. Pleasure. I just appreciate you for that. One of the questions I want to ask before I open it up is how do how do you get somebody to realize that they need to make a decision based on passion or pain, right? Because so, for so many people, life comes <laughs> up and they have to make the decision in the ready. How do you yeah. find out whether or not you should be doing it now before there's an obstacle, before there's some life-changing event? Okay, well, you have to bypass the thinking. That might sound a bit strange. But most people overthink everything. And what I like to encourage people to do is to actually, yeah, we're all, we're all guilty of it sometimes, um, is, is, is you need to kind of trust in the inner nudge, the inner nudge. And you normally get it in the solar plexus. So that, that you could be having a conversation with people and you could be saying, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And somewhere down here, you get a little feeling where the inner, inner you the major part of your being saying, why are you saying that? You know, that's not going to happen. You know, that's not for you. And if you can bypass that and trust it, now that's the key issue. You need to learn to trust it. You'll always make the right decisions for yourself. You'll always be able to get out of that kind of never ending cycle of doom where one thought kind of cascades into another and another and another. And and in the end, you need to go and take some painkillers because you've got a headache and and everything's just a a fuzzy haze. You know, it's absolutely crazy. Less is more. You need to step back, stop thinking and feel. That sound a bit like Bruce Lee. Stop thinking and feel. It's so true because your spiritual energy, your essence knows because it's a higher level of intelligence. So stop using the intelligence that's creating the confusion in the first place to try and figure it out. And learn to invest some time in working with this so you can learn to trust it and then go off gut instinct. I remember a long time ago, I heard a saying that I I adopted, never forgotten it. Always trust your gut instinct 
because it has not evolved to a place where it confuses everything with logic. Oh, I love that. I think that's brilliant advice. Mm. And so many of us ignore that, right? We ignore the knots in our stomach. or the Every gut. single one of us ignore that from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in the analysis paralysis moments. Yeah. Chris says yeah. that he wants you to write the, the introduction to his next book. <laughs> Things are things are laying down well today and, and being well received. So thank you for that, Robert. Uh, any any other comments or kudos before we close this out? I want to be conscious of everybody's time and, and respect uh, the journey today. I just want to say thank you. Um, great to meet you and hear from you, and uh, hope that you continue to participate in the group. Really Absolutely. appreciate it, and know that it's later for you, um, but certainly jump on with us more often if you can it'd be great bless you i certainly will yeah I've, I've enjoyed the energy and it's lovely to meet new people and see so many smiling faces so i'll try not to be a stranger i won't try i won't be a stranger how's that love it <laughs> context and words patrick and then uh, jonathan robert just i mean fantastic very inspirational every every word you utter and every experience you've shared thank you patrick phenomenal and i, I love the idea of letting your instincts guide you um, and, and get, you know, using your gut, which really doesn't care what the outer world thinks mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. um, it reminds me of training I had in the military where we were blindfolded and needing to walk through an obstacle course. And it was amazing how few things we bumped into uh -huh. when we closed our eyes. Mm. And, you know, it's a, it's a walk of faith. It's a leap of faith. And, and you're a walking, living, breathing example of that. So, I don't have a question. I just have a lot of applause for you. Oh, uh, bless you. Thank don't you. Don't be surprised when I reach out and ask you to be a guest on my podcast because I think it's <laughs> inspirational. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to jump in and sort of agree with everyone and also say one of the things that I, I love so much about these meetups is that we get such different value from all of our different guests mm. and it's so this one like within the first 10 minutes I just kind of thought that this would be this is such a great one to, to bookmark and anytime you need to you know you're feeling like you're doubting yourself or you need to have that you know a, a, a injection of inspiration or motivation this is such a great discussion to come back to because you touched on so many different so many different motions that I feel like many, every entrepreneur goes through. And I so appreciate mm -hmm. your uh, willingness to be vulnerable and share the real depth of your story, because we, you know, we've talked about this before in this group that, you know, a lot of times people will, you know, you see the entrepreneurs on social, the people who are hustling and the ones who are, you know, like just wait, you know, work 12 hours a day, save all this money. And like, it's, it's, it's true. You've got to work so much, but people are, I feel like they, they really shy away a lot of the time from talking about the difficulties of it, like the real mm -hmm. personal, tangible difficulties that come with, I have invested my time in developing this business. And I've, I, you know, I jumped off the edge. There is no going back. I have to mm -hmm. just follow this through. So to have that um, to have that documented here, uh, I think is it, again it's so relatable and it's so valuable to to the people who watch this video. So I really appreciate that. Thank you, Robert. Bless you, Jonathan. Thank you. I, I want to add something to that, if if it's okay. Now you, you you've actually mentioned it as well that that you do see people all the time, and it's such a sad thing they lose they lose track of the reason why they started a business in the first place. And the sad thing is that they go so far down the road, inevitably what ends up happening is the business owns them, not the other way around. And what have they traded for that? They traded their life. And we need to think about that sometimes. You so know, what important. price are we paying for this business? Yeah. Is it worth it? That is, I, I, again, like another wonderful thing to keep just every single day, something to keep in mind. Mm. Mm. This has to be, it, you know, and as silly as this might sound, like even though the business is not, you know, a sentient thing, there it is a partnership. It is mm. a partnership. I have committed to this, and I'm going to invest X amount of time in it. But if I find that this is taking away from so much of my life that is also so valuable to me and so important yeah. to me, what is, you know, how far am I willing to go, and what am I willing to sacrifice to get there? Because you've already sacrificed enough. Right. Yeah. You've got to think about how far you can go. And I again, like that's a wonderful thing to sort of meditate on. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's weird, actually, because we, we had a business a few years ago and um, it really wasn't working very well. And, 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 and I love the way that my son, because I brought my kids up around personal development. So now they're 
they kind of coach me sometimes and 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 it was it was great because you know we've been doing it a number of years and it just wasn't working the way I wanted it to work it wasn't and he said he said dad if you were in a marriage right now with a woman that you loved unconditionally with everything in you and you've been with her for so long you lavish her with gifts you you give her love all day long every day you worship that woman but you never get any love back at what point do you think might be time for you to say I need to leave this relationship I deserve to be loved back it's no different with a business it, the business at some point's got to love you back because your life is bigger than any business you'll build and we mustn't forget that and we all deserve to be loved either by our partners or by our businesses you know what a fantastic visual to put out there. I just, I have to, I have to say, and I think Patrick's got his hand up again. I, that is so true. And on so many levels, it's hard for us each day in mm. the moments to get up and remind ourselves of why we're doing things um, and to see if, whether or not we're loved back. Um, yeah. I, I love the way you put that because <laughs> this, the moments that matter, like moments for connection and community the answer is this, right? Being in moments like this, because Uncle Sam's calling. It's that time of year. It's the end of the first quarter. People are asking how you did. It's that time of year. Doom scrolling's happening every hour, every day, every second. It's it, it's hard to not let that spill over. And then it's even harder when you're in the throes of the business to see if whether or not it loves mm. you back, right? So I, I appreciate that, that visual, Robert. Welcome, welcome. Patrick. Yeah, I wanted to just circle back to something Adam said before, and it's, I think, something, Robert, that you you helped uh, make the space available that, uh, you know, you shared that 2022 or 2021 was a tough year, and, and without the community, you know, what might have happened. I think a lot of times it's easy to look at someone as a success or a pillar or a leader and just assume that that carries them for 12 months. And then they turn over the new year and it carries them for the next 12 months. But it's, and it's not every day. It's every step in every day mm -hmm. that counts. And I find myself sometimes getting on the call 15 minutes early with Adam just because I work by myself. And I can get in my own head. And people just assume, oh, Pat's confident. Pat's successful. Pat's this, Pat's that. And when I talk to Adam and he says one thing, I go, oh, whoa. Okay, well, change my perspective. So there's a mm. reason why you see the usual suspects on these meetings every yeah. week. Yeah. You get something from it. And you've given a ton today. And Thanks. Adam hit it on the head. It's a tough year. Where would I be without this group? Mm. And beyond a tough year, every minute of every day can be tough. And it can change. And it you know calls for a lot of things um, that you have to dig down. And like you said, you have to demand and expect love back from your business. Absolutely. Because Patrick, I've got, I've got a street. It's a two way street. Absolutely. You just also, opened something up and reminded me um, the late, great Jim Rohn. I loved him so much. He, he came out with, with a line. I love the way he used to throw lines away, but he said once he said, listen, get, get used to the fact that life is hard. If you want to know how hard life is, you're not getting out alive. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is the truth. It's true. Yeah. Which is the truth. And yeah. Business is hard. And this community does a lot for a lot of folks. And I just think that what Adam said spoke volumes that it's that's a throw off right there that where would we be without this group mm. um, and week to week and I and Robert, I hope you join us every single time we do mm. this, because your contributions to what other folks kick into the conversation will take us all to a higher higher ground. So thank you, Patrick. Please thank join you. us again next week and the week after and the week after that. Of course, of course. Yeah, definitely. You're gonna see a lot more of me. Captured for life. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Michelle. So I'm having internet connection issues for whatever reason. So this is this is quick. This was an answer to a prayer, believe it or not. When he talked about spiritual alignment. So Robert, you can understand the questions that have been going through my mind more recently. Almost everything you touched on. So I know this was meant to be. I, I can say that because as Patrick said, we all get in our heads, no matter how confident we look to other people or what's going on, if this person's doing great, we still get in our heads. <clears throat> and I wasn't always that way. So I tried to figure out where did the disconnect come from? And he hit on something that when you're in a space where you're constantly hearing the negative, that can play a part on that. 
Yeah. And so um, I'm glad things have changed and I'm just happy about all the new things. So again, your share today has been absolutely awesome. Oh, the wisdom you, yeah. that you share with everybody here and the, the real and the truth and story of what your journey was like has probably helped everybody on here. Bless you for that. Thank you. It's yes. been an absolute and pleasure. I'm glad you got value from it. Very much so. When you said burn bridges, I thought about Napoleon Hill. I started reading the book and have not finished Think yeah. and Grow yeah. Rich. But I was that way when I was younger, because if you intend on never going back, I don't care about that bridge. Yeah, I really don't. So but, you know, older people tend to beat in you. Oh, you never know when you need someone. Yeah. If you have faith. That's all you need. Do you know, but, do you know what, Michelle, the only opinion you can control is the one you have of yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so I've been taking that. this year to work on those things. And mm -hmm. I want to give a shout out to Jonathan. So him sharing his story with the dog and Bones Day. Um, I've been using that some some days. And today was a Bones Day because I got up and did my 15 minute walk outside with yes. some sunshine. <laughs> yes. Oh, I before love it. Meeting, before this meeting, usually it's after the meeting. So it was a Bones Day. So, so thank you. Glad and sharing all what you have. And I appreciate everyone. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, um, <clears throat> a little, little. I'm gonna edit this out later. Patrick, we don't give away secrets, man. We don't talk about being on 15 minutes early and just like connecting. What is that about? <laughs> <laughs> no. There's a whole nother group that meets that we don't know about. There's a secret society here. <laughs> no, as you can see, we, we like to have a lot of fun. So thank you to everybody that's offered your comments and your kudos and just being part of the meetup today. And for everybody that's gonna listen to this later, if you're looking in the mirror and you see somebody that you're meant to be, and you just don't feel it yet, take action, right? Take action. That's the number one thing we can do, whether it be in personal alignment, personal performance, or just finding a place where you can start to discover what you're meant to be. Take some action. Um, with that, Robert, one of the things we like to do is have people take action to connect to you and follow you. Where can we send them? That's going to be good for you and good for them. Okay, sure. Well, my main website is robertcbrown.online. So you can go find me there. Uh, that's probably the best one. Uh, you'll you'll see all the necessary links to go check things out there and and get involved with me there. So, yeah, robertcbrown.online. Sounds good. Hey, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for sharing all the gold you shared today, uh, and to the community members, I appreciate you guys. Remember, next week is our check in, so we're gonna we're gonna just check in, share wins, and and I'm not sure what the topic's gonna be yet, but it might be something aligned with today's conversation. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, Amazing. guys. Thank you all so much. What a great, again, these are so good. These are so good. These are so good. Thank you guys for today. This was fabulous. Thanks, everybody. Nice to meet you all. Take care. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you, Robert.